on the Ozarks in 5, brought to you by Adventure Cave Tours. Live a day in the life of a real adventurer with Adventure Cave Tours and the Springfield Green County Park Board, reminding you to go play. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Foreheads. Hey, hey, good to see you all. Good to be with you. It, uh, it's a Tuesday that feels like a Monday, which will pay off for us later in the week. I have no <laughs> doubt it'll be a short week for uh, for most of us. Hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. It uh, it signifies the end of summer, which in our house is a sad time. I go into a deep depression that lasts not that long until March or so. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, we'll uh, we'll talk some news and we'll talk about uh, what we did over the weekend and that kind of stuff coming up. Yes. Well, tis the season for hurricanes, as you know, because you just got back from one. Uh, we just came off Hurricane Idalia, and already the National Hurricane Center is tracking another tropical storm that apparently has a 70% chance of really developing in the Atlantic, likely into a hurricane. Uh, mm-hmm. Within a couple of days, that storm system is expected to become a tropical depression and then further strengthen Forecasters say most models show it strengthening into a hurricane as it moves toward the Caribbean islands within 10 to 14 days. Yeah, I know. We're going to maybe go through this drill all over again. Of course, I was down there with Convoy of Hope, uh, and we moved in. Uh, We were out of the hurricane zone, and then as as the storm moved up through Florida, we moved down into the zone located for the headquarters, basically in the field, was Perry, Florida, which is a very rural area. I lived in Tallahassee, which is that same market, TV market. Uh, So I know that area fairly well. It's uh, it's very rural, and uh, it's lower income in that area. So it's a tough it's a it's a tough go for a lot of the folks there. They had a lot of wind damage in that area down on the coast, of course, of the Gulf. That's where they had the storm surge that caused a lot of flooding damage. So people need a lot of help. Uh, convoy is still down there. I'm back, but convoy is still down there helping on a regular basis to giving out uh, essential supplies. And it looks like we're going to need to replenish those pretty quick because we may be headed to another hurricane in the near future. And of course, we're still on the island of Maui. Uh, helping following the wildfire. So it's, yeah, uh, it, it got busy real fast. Well, speaking of, if it seems like we've had a lot of natural disasters, it's because we have between tornadoes, wildfires, earthquakes, hurricanes, and flooding, and then just severe thunderstorms. Uh, they are taking quite the financial toll on America right now. President Biden is asking Congress to replenish FEMA's disaster relief fund to the tune of $16 billion. He says FEMA's disaster fund is already running out of money for the year. Um, They report 15 weather-related disasters, with each of them exceeding $1 billion in damages. Wow. It feels that way. It yeah. feels that way. I mean, you know, everything's expensive now. So you got to factor that in that every, uh, every disaster, you know, different levels of disaster, but every disaster is going to cost more than it used to. So those totals add up quick. Uh, but I don't know what total, uh, FEMA's total disaster fund was. was it only I don't know what their total billion? fund was either. He just says it's running low. And uh, sure. needing sixteen billion dollars, which I mean, goodness gracious, if they've already spent fifteen billion, uh, yeah. then you can imagine how high it is. You know, I mean, and well, yeah, I mean, thank and- the Lord for that because a lot of people use it um, because they need it. I can remember FEMA being down there right after the Joplin tornado, and that was my first up close and personal experience working with them and getting information from them. And um, you know, they had the temporary houses that they set up for people, so. Yep. Anywho, I mean, there you go. Fifteen billion almost seems low uh, whenever you hear some of the numbers that the government throws around uh, when it comes to dollars. But whatever, we'll see what happens. Uh, back here in the Ozarks, Labor Day storms were in and out pretty quickly, uh, but they packed a punch. Springfield City Utilities is reporting more than eleven hundred customers lost power during the storms. Lawrence County, more than five hundred customers were in the dark for a time. Uh, There were also some outages in Christian County. We just got a lot of rain in our house. Uh, And then mark your calendar starting on uh, Saturday, September 16th. So it's coming up. Get ready. Uh, The Missouri Department of Transportation will once again close the westbound lanes of James River Freeway. Uh, Remember the sinkhole that opened up a few weeks ago? Yeah, you you heard about that. You were many of you stuck in the traffic that it caused. 
Well, uh, MoDOT still has to get it completely closed up and fully repaired. This is just a Band-Aid they have on it now. So be advised, westbound lanes between uh, 65 and Glenstone, that's a very busy area, will both will and as well as both ramps onto James River Freeway will be closed while additional pa- repairs are made to that sinkhole. that will take them about one full week to get everything fixed and for the road to, ba- uh, to open up. So plan accordingly. Uh, try to get around that in any way that you can starting on Saturday, September 16th. Yep. Uh, I do remember it when it happened. So, yeah, that was a, a pretty wild day. Uh, with Labor Day behind us now, which is too bad, right? There are some pretty major changes coming to food stamp recipients and those who might or might not still be eligible starting now in order to receive benefits. Adults up to 50 years old will now have to show proof that they are working at least 80 hours a month, assuming they are able-bodied. There are some exemptions to this new rule, such as homeless people, veterans, and adults who aged out of the foster care system. They are exempt from this 80 uh, hours a month of working. Um, so they're estimating about 750,000 people will lose their benefits. And Congress says it should reduce government spending and increase the labor force. All right. If you're looking to fly, the Branson airport is once again, an option for commercial flight customers. Sun Country Airlines announced service from Branson to Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. Flights to Branson will operate twice a week through mid-November. We just had a pl- uh, friend on that plane, right? The first the first one that took off. She was very they, excited. Yeah. Kendra. Congratulations they were on to that, Kendra on that flight. She was on the inaugural flight. Um, very yeah, excited. Cool. That's her home. That is her home. Uh, uh, I don't else? know how many people fly to Minneapolis, but I, I do know say. that if it's an international airport, that's good news for Branson or for anyone in the Ozarks needing an international airport. So if it's a quick flight there, you can go anywhere from there. Well, I don't know why else you'd want to go to Minneapolis, but I'm sure there are nice things to hey, do. Hey, now, it's there's cold great people. There's great people. Are there? Like Kendra. From okay. Minneapolis, yeah. She left. She left. <laughs> uh, all right. It is that time of year again, the unofficial end of summer, as we've been talking about. That means public pools are closing for humans and going to the dogs. This happens every year. It's always a sad sight, but it is fun to see the dogs. Tonight, you and your pooch can head to Fast Night Pool for some swimming time fun. Happening from 4 to 7 this evening, dogs must be four months old or older and have proof of vaccination. I think you make a donation there. Uh, that helps dog parks in the area as you go and the dogs get to swim and the humans get to watch them swim. And it's a, it's a good time. There will always be at least if you watch the newscast, there'll always be one weather cast live shot from the pool when dogs are swimming, because why not? Right. Well, it's fun. It's fun to see. You know, what was, uh, last night, uh, our neighborhood pool, uh, it's now closed, which is sad for me to say. Uh, but we were, you know, Griffin was the very first, person in the pool for the last two years running or three maybe it's three but anyway i gave him the we were coming home from soccer practice last night about 7 30 and i gave him the opportunity to be the very last one in the pool as well uh i offered to just stop by and let him run and jump in with his soccer shorts on and uh and he passed (laughs) he didn't didn't want to do it he said well "Eh." Nah. I'll tell you the pool. I was in a pool outdoor pool this weekend and it was pretty chilly. Honestly, the rain can cool it down quickly. So he might have made a good choice. Yeah. No, I wasn't going to get in, but I did want to go yesterday, but it, it rained too much. and was too chilly Yeah, to go, to go to the pool and enjoy it. Uh, all right. Crumble cookies. Uh, you probably seen them in other cities. You've heard of it. It's a good cookie place. Springfield is getting one at the end of the year. We've told you about that. It's expected to open at Carney and Glenstone. And now we know a second one is coming to town as well. We don't know much about that one, about where it will be or when. Uh, The first one, though, will be right located right beside the Echelon Coffee Shop that's at the corner of uh, Carney and Glenstone. Crumble Cookie is known for its big selection of cookies and other sweet treats. I know our kids love, they beg for Crumble Cookie whenever we go to kansas city or or wherever so they like it i know that yes i took them once without you whenever i was up there with them for either soccer or swimming but funny 
we ordered ice cream. Remember you yelled at us for this? So I still oh, haven't yeah. actually had a crumble cookie, believe it or not. I've That's, only been once and I had ice cream. If the if they put it in the title, I feel like you're obligated to get it. Like you went to that tamale shop and you got tacos. I don't understand that. They were really good. But it doesn't really I'm good. Sure they were, but maybe you get that on your second trip. Okay. Uh, if, if it's in the title, I know. I think you gotta go with it. They know what they're good at. Right. Um, okay. You go to this Panera Thursday. Bread. You go to Panera Bread Company. What do you get? You get you get some bread, bread of some sort. Uh, but I don't is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I should. Um, all right, this Thursday, which is soon, because again, we didn't work Monday, so it feels weird that it's already Tuesday. Um, so Thursday, the Seymour Apple Festival kicks off, and we'll go through Saturday. It is all things Apple. Speaking of what they're good at, apple pie, apple jelly, apple butter. Apple bread, you name it. You can yeah, find don't it get there. Into the Sarah, you'd go there and get some blueberry jelly. <laughs> Anywho, you any can flavors other than enter apple? yourself into a contest for the best, and then a judge will be the judge of that uh, at the Seymour Methodist Church starting at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Also on Saturday at 10, they will have their parade uh, starting at the corner of Main Street and East Market Street. And since we are in the season for fall festivals, we will try to highlight some different fall festivals happening around the Ozarks. And there's one for today. So yep. go Pump see more Apple Festival. Pumpkin everything is on the way very soon. Hey, I don't know. I think we may have talked about this on the podcast before. But remember when we uh, judged Judge the apple the pie apple, eating contest? Yes, I sure do. Because we had so, about 100 bites of pie. And we yeah, thought we could never get sick of pie. But as it turns out... You can. Yeah, I was going to say, for anybody who thinks that, man, that'd be great. It sounds great, and we thought it was going to be great until we started eating pie on and on bite yeah. 35 or so of pie. You start you to were, get tired you of were pie. Done. Yeah. And I, it, it's hard to judge fairly, honestly, because you just become like, oh, okay. I know why those wine people spit it out, spew it right out of their mouth after they, right. uh, after they uh, taste it. Uh, because you can't, you can't, I mean, for them, they'd be liquored up while they're judging. But for us, it was just, you know, I needed a nap. Right. Um, so Larry from the fair, I don't know if I told you, but Larry invited us to be the judge of the food truck competition that's coming up. I think it's on Saturday, September 16th. Uh, and I was very excited about the possibility of judging a food truck. I'm yeah. like, we could do that. Yeah. But that we're going to be gone bad. or else I'm going to be gone and you can't do it without me. Because I'm more fun than you. And so no, I was like, I'm well, out of town. yeah, I'm out of town that weekend too. Um, anyway, so thanks to Larry. And that should be a fun time at the fairground. We'll keep you posted with more information on that as we get a little closer. But anyway, it was like our, it was, we could totally redeem our food. No, judging, I love, you know, I love food trucks and there, you know, there's too. not, there's not 75 food trucks. Right. Uh, or maybe there are. I don't know. It seems like there's a lot these days. Um, okay, before we go, we want to mention another contest to win Chiefs Chief tickets. tickets. Yeah. So this is exciting. What you need to do, go to AroundTheOzarks.com. And for this contest, you will have to upload your best Chiefs photo. Whatever okay. you think. Your yeah. dog could be dressed up as Patrick Mahomes. You can be dressed up. You can be at a game. You could be eating a a cake that's like chiefs themed. It can be your office. Like maybe your office is decorated. Um, very, you know, chiefs fan, so, like super fan. Right. Anyway, so just there's, there's upload a lot of ideas, a photo, lots a lot of, of ideas. ideas. There you go. I threw out right. a few. Yeah. Um, and that if you covered. win, if your photo gets selected, then you can win a pair of tickets. So two tickets to a Kansas city chiefs ball game. That's pretty cool. I love around the Ozarks how we're just throwing out tickets like every week. It seems like we're giving out it's fun. Chiefs tickets. Yes, those are yep. nice. Those are great tickets, man. As it turns good out, you and I good cannot enter, or else we'd at least try. But uh, good for us, there you go. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's cool. Um, so check it out around the Ozarks .com. You know how I was thinking about to enter that contest. Yeah, do it. Give us some, your, your Chiefs pictures. I was thinking about this weekend, we were down in Bentonville for, uh, I actually was flying home from Florida and I flew straight to Bentonville, which worked out well because Sarah and the kids just picked me up at the airport, surprised the kids. And I got to hang out with them for the remainder of the weekend while they were all 
doing triathlons and all did extremely well. Of course, you get tired of hearing me talk about that. Uh, but I was thinking about that when at the award ceremony, Sarah, when you were getting your award, remember the guy, yeah, the guy that was wearing the uh, he was he was like in the eighty five age group, wasn't he? Oh man, he yeah. Probably, I don't know. I don't think he was 85. Maybe he was 80. Like, I think the top yeah. age was 80. So he would have been to 85? 80 to 85. Yeah. Something like that. Anyway, he, was he wearing... did the triathlon full Patrick Mahomes tri suit. So, are you familiar with the triathlon suit? Like, skin tight. I can't, skin tight. I, it's like, it looks like a bicycle uniform. That's what it looks like. So, surely you've watched the Tour de France before. Um, but it said Mahomes on it. And then he had the wig on. And my kids <laughs> saw him and they were all like, because he sat by us at the award ceremony and they were looking at him. And I'm like, I don't know if it's real. They were trying to ask me if his hair was real. And I wasn't sure. But then yeah. he won, of course, because why would he not? So, when he gets up to get his award, then I can tell, oh, no, no, it's a whole shtick. Yeah. So, but he did the whole thing, chiefed out. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It was awesome. Uh, so that's where we were this weekend. We had a nice time. Uh, the boy did some fishing, and uh, the, everybody did some triathloning, and I did some supporting. There's no the, A in athlon, just so you know. People often with the spell I it, throw but... one in there just for fun. <laughs> uh, with the water and whatnot, I bought them uh, some pizza afterward. So I think I uh, did a nice job supporting everybody because they did very well. Number one support crew, always. Yeah. Um, all right. And by the way, it was for MS Research which is mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, it is near and dear to my heart with family members uh, greatly impacted by that. So um, yeah. honestly, it's just encouraging to be out there with a bunch of people who have a connection to the cause, either they themselves or family members, and then to see how much money is raised because yeah. it's impressive. And Benville's a really nice place to visit. They've got, if you like trails and biking and man, they've got all that all sorts heavy of outdoors. duty. Yeah. I Great think everyone stuff. here, if you're in the biking community, you already know that. But if you're not and you're like, man, where could we go? Um, I mean, we have a good, I like our trail system too, but theirs is like Walmart money, you know, that Walmart has invested a lot uh, and it's very, very cool. So we have the art um, museum there. Yeah. Crystal Bridges. Yeah, Crystal it's Bridges, awesome. Yeah. It's a good mm -hmm. place. Yeah. Okay. Well, happy Tuesday, everybody. It's a short work week for you. So hopefully we'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Yeah. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye. It's time for Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather. Here's your host, Abby Dyer. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your Tuesday. I hope everyone had a great long weekend. If you had a long weekend, that is. Thank you for working and laboring if you had to work yesterday. Uh, for those of you that were off, I hope you had a chance to enjoy the nice summer-like weather. We did have some storms around on Monday, uh, especially down in Arkansas and extreme southern Missouri. Those of you trying to spend some time on Table Rock Lake yesterday, well, we got some rain. Much needed rain, uh, but hopefully it didn't ruin your boating or swimming plans for the afternoon. Uh, we have another chance for rain as we head into Tuesday, and I think a lot of folks are excited about that. So let's dive into the forecast as we start this short work week, hopefully short work week for uh, most folks around the Ozarks. We are starting out with temperatures that are not too bad. It's comfortable out this morning. It's going to be a hot one today, though. Really, the big headline in the forecast this week is that the heat and humidity are back. Even though we had temperatures in the 90s over the weekend, the humidity wasn't so bad. So you really were able to enjoy the outdoors, even with 90s uh, that we had around yesterday and on Sunday. Now we're talking about temperatures that are likely going to be creeping upwards. And I have heat index values that are back today. We have a strong south breeze that was out yesterday too. And today you can expect south winds gusting 20 to 30 miles an hour. Uh, some of the wind gusts across the region will be strongest out west, but gusts to 30, keep that in mind. If you're trying to do something outdoors today, it will be a little bit breezy. And it's those south winds that are bringing up the heat and humidity in the forecast. We also have a heat index value that's going to make it to the century mark today. I think easily we're seeing heat index values near 100. So those heat headlines are back in the forecast as we begin the new week. Conditions are going to feel really muggy 
This is not isolated to any one part of the Ozarks today either. In fact, today, a heat index in Springfield of 100 degrees, maybe closer to 105 up in central Missouri, places that are really brown and really feeling the drought conditions. I think we could see heat index values near 105. So be careful out there today if you're going to be spending any time outside. What could save us is this isolated chance for some storms. But really, I think most of the daylight hours are dry today. It's going to be late tonight that we see the better chance for some rainfall. Once again, it's looking like South Central Missouri and Northern Arkansas getting the best chance for rain, and it's only about a 30% chance. So not everyone going to see the rain and storms tonight. However, if they materialize, I think a few of them could be on the strong side, bringing some gusty winds and maybe even some hail to the Ozarks. This week, the big story is that a frontal boundary is on the way, and it's going to open the door to some more unsettled weather. So there is a rain chance later tonight. I hope you get some rain for that. If you don't, I have additional chances for rain later this week. There are some isolated chances for Wednesday and Thursday. Friday looks like a bit of, a bit of a better rain chance for to me across the region. And temperatures this week will be warm, but today is actually one of the hottest. On this Tuesday, we have a chance for some isolated showers and thunderstorms. A couple are possible, and it will be partly sunny today. Breezy, as I mentioned, with those strong south winds. But a high temperature today, around 92, feeling, of course, more like 100 degrees. Heat index as high as 105. Heat index looks a little bit better for Wednesday. I don't think the showers will be as widespread going for a high temperature of 90 on Wednesday. And then temps will drop a little bit by Thursday and Friday with a frontal boundary in the area. Still upper 80s, low 90s though. So it is going to be hot several days this week before the weekend. And that's when I think we finally start to see some 80s show up in that seven day forecast. So it'll start to feel a little bit better. Also, weather making headlines around the country, not just here in the Ozarks for our dry, hot conditions, but uh, National Hurricane Center watching another area of interest out in the Atlantic. Uh, I think we'll be hearing about this one later this week, too, because it has about a 90% chance of developing, turning into at least a tropical storm, perhaps another named storm. If this one in Vest 95 is named, by the way, the next name on the list is going to be Lee, but this is going to be approaching the Caribbean probably by the end of the week. So um, just kind of an early heads up that you may be hearing about the tropics and some activity in the tropics as the week goes on. This one has a really good chance of developing. It's in some really warm water. Uh, the trajectory does take it uh, to the Caribbean and then eventually the United States. However, there's a big area of high pressure and hopefully this one is going to turn and go out into open water. But I'm watching that. You may hear about a new named storm out in the Atlantic this week now that we are well into hurricane season. Uh, the other big headline across the country is that a whole lot of our friends on the East Coast are going to be dealing with some record heat. The big ridge of high pressure that's been out there for us for the last two weeks, bringing us incredibly hot temperatures, it's actually going to make for a string of hot days for the Mid-Atlantic and New England. In fact, like Washington, D.C., even today could hit 100 degrees. So they are talking record heat probably through about Thursday of this week before that heat backs off and they get some shower chances too. So uh, it's going to be hot on the East Coast, hot in the Midwest. In fact, record temperature is probably going to be coming out of uh, the Northeast as we head through the middle of the week. All right, I want to give you a look at that brain twister question. Of course, yesterday was Labor Day and that's the question that we left you with last week. What year did Labor Day become a national holiday? I saw a lot of folks taking a guess at this over on the Around the Ozarks Facebook page. And the answer, if you guessed B, 1894, you would be correct. Labor Day became recognized as a national holiday in 1894 when President Grover Cleveland signed the law passed by Congress designating the first Monday in September as a national holiday for workers. And we are certainly thankful for that. Uh, and then the question that always comes up for me, I am not following it today, wearing white after Labor Day. Uh, do you have to do that? New rules 
say, no, you do not have to follow that. But I did look into like, why, why is that a rule? I almost made that the brain twister question. I couldn't find a straight answer. Uh, those of you that also wonder if you can wear your white after Labor Day, um, I looked into this and if someone else has an answer, feel free to email me. You can do that at abby at aroundtheozarks.com. But I couldn't find a clear answer. No traceable history for the origin of no white after Labor Day. It's just kind of a social rule. Most agree, though, that it probably stemmed from the wealthier classes back in the day who spent entire summers at resorts. And then when they returned home, they put away their summer clothing because they were no longer out on the golf course or no longer out playing tennis. Uh, They would pack that away and prepare to work for the next nine months. So that's kind of uh, the origin as far as I see it. I say wear your white after Labor Day. I'm doing it today. Um, but we are now after Labor Day. So those of you that follow the rule, I guess, put away your whites. Here is the weather brain twister question for tomorrow. Which state has the most national parks? Do you think it is A, Utah, B, California, C, Alaska, or D, Arkansas? Let me know what you think. You can take your guess over on the Around the Ozarks Facebook page. I really appreciate you listening today. It's going to be a hot one. High temperature, 92, partly sunny. Chance for some showers and thunderstorms, especially this evening, and a breezy south wind. So keep that in mind if you have any outdoor plans today. If you need to check weather throughout the rest of the afternoon, make sure you check that out at aroundtheozarks.com. I've got you covered there all day long. I will chat with you tomorrow, have the answer to the brain twister question. And thanks for listening. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We will talk to you tomorrow.